Namaskar. What are the lessons to be learned or the lessons that we can learn from the experience of the last 18 to 20 months of the COVID-19 crisis? I'm sure we all uh, agree that there are a lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, the lessons are scattered in, uh, in, uh, in the experiences of uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of physicians from all over the world, from their direct experience in uh, treating patients. Uh, we have the experiences of, uh, of research scientists who have done some great work uh, in trying to inform us about the nature and, uh, and potency of this virus and the nature and potency of the human immunity system. There are also lessons to be learned uh, by the mistakes we have done, you know, by, by the wrong directions that have been taken, some of them in, in good faith and some quite questionable decisions. I would like uh, in this uh, uh, channel uh, to, to, to list that down, to put, to select and put all these learnings in one place. I think it will be very useful. So let us go on to lesson number one, uh, which I will uh, address in this uh, small 10 minute video. And that is, do no harm. Now, this phrase is part of the Hippocratic Oath taken by all physicians who study Western medicine after completion of their studies. And it is, do no harm is a constant reminder to the physicians and to the physician scientists uh, who also become laboratory researchers or medical bureaucrats. It is a constant reminder. And that is important here because we have actually done harm and are even now doing harm by the kind of research that we do into viruses, including the coronavirus, in various laboratories in something called the gain of function research. Last week, we shared in this channel a report of how there was an organized misinformation campaign by powerful people to bury the investigation into the source of the new coronavirus, also called COVID-19. Well, two days after the director of the U.S. National Institute of Health, NIH, uh, Dr. Francis Collins, was reported to have resigned following revelations in the media in, uh, in a publication called Intercept, if I'm not mistaken, that he had hidden facts and had lied about the NIH-funded work on corona bat viruses going on in Chinese labs. Apparently, the American public and media was kept completely in the dark about this. If you have not seen that report, which we did in this channel, uh, I'll put the link to that video in the text description below. Now, what is gain of function research? This is the name for biological research aimed at increasing the virulence and lethality of pathogens. A pathogen, in simple words, is a microorganism that can cause disease. It can be a virus, a bacteria, a parasite, or anything else. So, in simple words, gain of function research involves taking a pathogen, say an earlier version of the coronavirus, and mutating it so that it has a new aspect to it. And often that new aspect of a virus is that it has more transmissibility. It is more deadly to human beings. And this is the stated purpose of such research, you know, as uh, told by the scientists who do it, that they say uh, and they defend this action by saying that they can, uh, you know, prevent future pandemics, which is highly questionable considering the fact that the prime suspicion is that it is leading to pandemics, causing pandemics. There is a brief history to this because this is not the first time such research is uh, happening or being questioned. In 2011, there were two experiments which came to light. Uh, Yoshihuro Kawa Kawaoka, I'm sorry, I hope I'm I'm not really mispronouncing it badly, uh, from the University of Wisconsin and his team introduced mutations into the H5N1 virus and then combined it with seven genes from a H1N1 virus, thus creating a hybrid, artificially man-made uh, a new virus, which then was seen to be able to spread by air and infect mammals. The experiment they did uh, was proven in ferrets. And almost at the same time, uh, in Europe, Ron Fauchier, I, I hope again I'm pronouncing that right, of the Erasmus Medical Center, Netherlands, created another uh, case of mutant H5N1 virus. And again, he demonstrated that what was a virus which was restricted, uh, you know, to, to some other animal community could may, be made to jump 
into into mammals and uh, spread in their community as well and without direct contact because the mutant variant that he created uh, was airborne it was uh, it was spreading from one ferret to another airborne they were not wearing masks the ferrets gof or gain of function research is largely government funded and these experiments are extremely dangerous and such deadly science enhanced you know pathogens and viruses can and do escape uh, into community like it happened uh, in 2014 when there were major incidents in the US of dangerous pathogens leaking from laboratories pathogens like anthrax smallpox and influenza and these lab incidents led to a safety crackdown at the CDC and the Obama administration put a moratorium on funding of gain of function research till a complete study on on the on the safety and ethical aspects of it could be ascertained but a few years later in 2017 that moratorium was lifted uh, and again without any explanation and without making that study report public uh, it was uh, allowed and uh, in 2019 uh, the controversial lab studies, uh, you know, to modify bird flu viruses and, you know, uh, get them into humans, the very same which were halted were allowed again to restart. That is the state of affairs as of now. And it is in this background that we must see the gain of function research as a whole and uh, how, how the coronavirus, the earlier versions too, have been, you know, gene spliced and played around with their DNAs uh, and, uh, and new dangerous viral, uh, virulent varieties created of which because this whole thing is shrouded in secrecy uh, very uh, few less information is made available to the public and uh, even if it was made available it would be too late and as a conflict of interest there is a huge problem here the very agencies you know the NIH one whose director has now resigned and the other institute the institute of allergy and infectious diseases whose head is uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. These are the institutions which are funding the gain of function research, which has seen to be uh, uh, creating potent pathogens, very dangerous man-created pathogens, and which, has, which have also leaked from labs, and which may be the cause for what can be described as a crime against humanity, you know, if a pandemic should actually be uh, sourced to a man-made work in a lab. But the, look at the conflict of interest. It is these same gentlemen who, when that infection arises, who, when the pandemic uh, spreads in the world, are at the hem of affairs, you know, to, uh, to, to, to investigate the matter. Uh, they are at the top, you know, to, to deal with the matter. So do you think the real truth will ever come out? Don't you think that they are going to hide their mistakes, which they are now known to be doing? But this idea of using, uh, you know, our fantastic technology, and there's no doubt that a human being in his ingenuity has created some, some, some remarkable and fascinating technology. But what we are talking here is not restricted. The misuse of technology is not restricted to these viruses, which is the subject of our discussion because of the, of the coronavirus pandemic. There are other areas in which this insanity, this madness is seen to be spreading. I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, it is to do with mosquitoes. On May 1, 2020, just last year, a company called Oxitec, a, a UK company, it, re it received permission from the US Environmental Protection Agency to release millions of genetically modified mosquitoes, to release millions every week over the next two years in Florida and Texas. Now, this has been a raging issue because for the last five years, ever since 2016, they have been, uh, you know, pushing uh, the government and they were given, uh, you know, partial permission in 2016, but the process was, uh, could not be completed because the people protested. Uh, in 2018, there was a huge furore and there was actually a referendum, if I'm not mistaken, in Florida and uh, they rejected, the public said, we don't want this kind of dangerous genetic-based experiments and to be released into the wild. You think this, these guys who do it are going to be chasing and bringing back those mosquitoes who are going to be breeding like mosquitoes very fast? And even in this case, this particular uh, uh, permission that they have received 
the, in the procedure, you know, the uh, Environment Agency is supposed to ask the public for its uh, uh, opinion and, uh, and the public forum uh, applications when they counted, they found 31,174 comments opposing the release of these mosquitoes and only 56 in support and yet they gave the permission. Strange are the ways of, of government uh, and US government agencies. Now what can be the purpose you know, of, of doing all this and how do these scientists justify it? Uh, to me more and more these people uh, appear like uh, you know, the, the villains of Hollywood movies who have these crazy ideas you know, villains who are powerful but a little uh, strange here. And they, uh, they are saying that these mosquitoes have been genetically modified, only male mosquitoes, such that when they are released into the wild, they will mate with the female mosquitoes. And because their genes have been modified, the offspring, uh, the, the, the baby uh, mosquitoes that are born, uh, the male ones will be alright, but the female ones uh, will be infertile. Now they cannot further lay, lay eggs and produce more mosquitoes. On paper, I mean how, how easy and nice this sounds, but really does nature work like that? This same company, Oxitec, has an experience in Brazil too. When the Florida experiment was denied in 2018, they went to Brazil and released uh, the mutant mosquitoes in the wild in Brazil. And we have the result of that study. Just 18 months into that study and they reported, uh, the Brazil uh, agency reported that the mosquitoes rather than uh, being reduced had actually increased. Their population had increased because nature had somehow found a way to counter this genetic modification that was, had taken place. How exactly it happened, they don't know. But the fact is that it's, it was a spectacular failure, that experiment. We also have the experience of antibiotics. Uh, now all of us know uh, in a general way that stronger and stronger antibiotics are now being produced and prescribed. And what is the reason? The reason is that the pathogens, uh, the various types of bacteria and virus are increasingly getting resistant to those antibiotics, the earlier ones. So they also are mutating on their own. These lab chaps are doing their experiment and you know one mutation at a time whereas these things are, are naturally primed to, be, to, to survive themselves. And we have reached such a dangerous state here where even the strongest antibiotics are now failing against even normal diseases. So many examples we have even in the present coronavirus case we made a vaccine against, against one uh, virus we thought one even though uh, the, the, the aware among the scientists said that this is an unstable virus, yet we went for the vaccine method and then we produced one and then we got, we named it alpha and then we got a beta and then a gamma and a delta and now they are talking about mu, nu, z, how many, all virus for all the alphabets uh, in the Greek language. This should really be a lesson for us and that is why I have named this as lesson number one. Uh, out of this entire 18 to 20 month of complete, uh, you know, catastrophe in the world. Uh, what we are calling a pandemic has not just been a medical pandemic, it has been an economic pandemic. It has been a, 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 a pandemic, in so social pandemic uh, in terms of how it has, uh, you know, fragmented society. Lesson number one in conclusion, do no harm. I am reminded of this beautiful Hippocratic Oath and they really mean something. They are a reminder to the medical physician community to be sensitive, to keep their sensitivity alive all the time and not for it to be numbed with uh, technology. And do no harm means no more such radical, uh, insane, uh, genetically modified, uh, nature threatening research. And I think all of us, uh, if we believe in it, uh, can act in our own ways in our communities, even uh, with politics. You know, we can demand it of our uh, members of parliament or senators or congressmen or whatever that they shall oppose such research in the future. Thank you. Uh, stay healthy. Stay happy. Namaskar.